Hi guys, welcome to my channel. In today's video, let's look at the Dell S2722 QC 27-inch USB monitor and check if this under $300 monitor is the right one for your PS5 gaming needs. Guys, I really had to do a lot of digging around to find that perfect monitor for under $300 that will suit both my work and PlayStation 5 gaming needs. And I think this might be the one. In this video, let's unbox it, set it up, test out the screen quality and all its features. And in the end, I will tell you what my requirements are and the reasons for opting for this monitor. Plus, I'll give you any downsides and negatives as well. So grab your snacks, relax and enjoy the show. So a massive box here. I did underestimate the size for sure. Inside you have instructions, then the warranty information. Then you get a USB-C to USB-C cable. Then it's the power cable. We then have the base bit of the stand. It is nice, heavy and got rubberized linings at the bottom. Let's remove the top tray. So that's the monitor in there. But first, let's look at the stem part of the stand. Again, it really feels nice and well built. Next onto the main event, the 27 inch monitor. Right away, you can see it's got matte finish. Otherwise, you would have been able to see mine and my partner's reflection on the screen along with all the filming gear. Let's look around. The monitor has got two bottom firing speakers along with controls towards the bottom. At the back, we have the Dell logo embossed along with the cutout for the stand. Ports and connection wise, you first have the power socket along with Kensington lock to one side. To the other side, you have two HDMI 1.4 ports, USB Type-C port capable of 50 watt power delivery, which also doubles as a display port. We'll check that out in a minute. Then there is the 3.5 mm headphone jack and a USB 3.2 Gen 1 port. There's another USB 3.2 port towards the bottom where the speakers are located as well. Now, it's time to set it up. The stand first. So the bottom bit slots and you just tighten the screw which is included. The stand really feels amazing. Seriously guys, most monitor stands feel cheap, but not this one. Connecting it to the monitor is very simple. You just slot it in and it clicks into place. Now, the monitor is all set up and ready. See, that stand is quite versatile. It gives you height adjustment along with tilt adjustment. But not only that, it also allows you to adjust the orientation. Perfect if you are a streamer or a coder and you'd like to use the monitor in portrait mode. All these position changes are very smooth. Thanks once again to that awesome stand. Now it's time to power it on. The cable management hole on the stand is quite useful and keeps the cables nice and tidy. It's now on. Let me connect my laptop first via HDMI and it is stunning. You can see that 4K resolution in all its glory. Also, you can see how the glossy laptop screen looks in contrast with the matte finish of the monitor. I will play one of my YouTube videos. I shoot all of them in 4K guys. So if you have a 4K screen, you can check all my videos in the full glorious 4K resolution. The thin black bezels make this entire thing look bigger than what it actually is. And I really like this look. For work stuff, it does suit, but certainly feels a little big, especially if you're coming from a 22 or 24 inch screen size like me. Also do check if your laptop and the graphics card has got enough power to support this monitor. Now let me connect my PlayStation 5. I'm really excited as you can take full advantage of that glorious resolution and it looks stunning. I am playing Uncharted Legacy of Thieves Collection which just now launched for the PlayStation 5 and right away I can feel that 60 Hz smoothness and that glorious 4K resolution. Now you can see that the viewing angles are brilliant as well. The gameplay is very smooth. There is no lag or delays or stuttering. 
it is a delight to play these games on this 4K monitor. Next, let's look at the controls. The buttons are faced downwards, but as soon as you click on one, it brings up the menu and then it makes it easy to toggle between various options. You have the typical adjustments like controlling brightness, input source, etc. Along with picture in picture and picture by picture modes as well. So in picture in picture, you can simultaneously run two inputs like I did here. The main area is taken up by the PlayStation 5 and the smaller one by my laptop. You can swap these around if needed. And there is a size selection as well. You can choose between small and large. Plus, you can also choose the input source. Now, P by P allows you to split the screen in half and use two input sources at the same time. I here have my laptop connected along with my PlayStation connected to the other side. Then moving on to the other controls, we have the volume control. This laptop has dual speakers capable of three watts output. And here's how they sound. Homepod Mini has been around for a while. So in this video, let's unbox and check out. They are pretty decent and give you enough feedback and stereo effect if you just want to rely on them whilst gaming or watching videos. The display is really stunning and once again you can see the different viewing angles, it doesn't distort the picture too much. Now let's look at the features in a bit more detail. Like I mentioned, it's a 4K 27 inch IPS panel display supporting 60 hertz refresh rate. It also supports AMD FreeSync technology. So if you have a supporting PC or a device, then you can take full advantage of that stutter free gaming. It has two HDMI 1.4 ports, so you do get full 4K resolution at 60 FPS. The monitor offers 4ms response time if you're looking for that instant response rates for online gaming. You have a USB Type-C port which works in alternate mode between display port and power delivery up to 50 watts. So you can conveniently charge your USB-C devices and the good thing is that the cable is included as well. So I here have my iPad Pro connected via USB-C and you can see it charges, but also it mirrors the screen onto the monitor. So here I have three devices connected at the same time. So I've got one HDMI port going into the laptop, the other one into the PS5 and the USB Type-C port into my iPad Pro. This really is so cool. You also have two USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports. One of them is capable of power delivery now again, a very useful feature, you can connect a charging cable and charge devices. Now guys, I'll give you my reasons and the requirements which I have and why I chose this monitor. First, I wanted to find something which will support my PS5 gaming and work life for under $300 or £300 in the UK. Second, I wanted an IPS panel without having to opt for VA or other technologies. Third, my gameplay is mostly story driven single player games. I do not play online competitive gaming. So resolution for me took priority over faster refresh rates. You can get 4K with HDMI 2.1 ports for that faster refresh rate, but you are looking to spending somewhere in the region of 700 pounds and more for such configuration. Now 700 pounds will give you an amazing 4K TV. And finally, I needed inbuilt speakers. You'd be surprised to find how many monitors do not have this feature. I know most gamers use headphones, but I really rely on the internal speakers of my AOC monitor for general stuff like playing videos or podcasts on the background whilst I work. And I wanted this feature in the new monitor. Most monitors in this price range do not have internal speakers. So if this is a really useful feature for you, do check the specs before you hit that buy button. I almost did it twice on different monitors only to realize that they don't have any inbuilt speakers. So for me, this monitor ticked all those boxes. So in conclusion, if you're after a decent 4K monitor, which has amazing build quality, a totally versatile stand and useful ports, you should seriously consider going for the Dell S2722 QC monitor. And to top it all off with, Dell tech support is top notch and the warranty covers you for the first year so you can game on worry free. Now let's look at negatives and downsides. There aren't that many, certainly not enough to deter me from recommending this monitor to everyone. 
First, I would say that this monitor only has HDMI 1.4 ports and not even the 2.0 ports. It's not a huge deal breaker as HDMI still supports 4K and it looks stunning and smooth all the time I was gaming on this monitor. Then the biggest gripe which I have about this monitor is the location of the ports. They really are so difficult to get to. I can't imagine why Dell hasn't added them facing outwards. Instead, they face downwards and the only way to get to them is to tilt your monitor down, making sure that you don't accidentally let it slip or touch that screen too hard. But besides this, all in all, it's a very good monitor for that under $300 price point. I'll leave links to this and other alternate configurations of this monitor down in the description box below if you wish to check them out. So that's it for the video, guys. Do let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. If you have any questions about this monitor, please do ask them down below and I will try to answer all of them. And whilst you're there, if you like the video, please hit that like button. And the subscribe button is just a few pixels away. And if you haven't already subscribed to Rav Media, please do so. Support my channel so I can keep making these videos for you. And as always, thanks a lot for staying with me until the end. I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now.